So without further ado, we will get into talking about sleeping bags. If you have any questions about sleeping bags, if you've been trying to choose what to get or you have any specific questions about how to use them, fire them through and our helpful assistant today, Tony, <laughs> who will remain out of shot, <laughs> uh, Tony will be passing me any questions from you as we go through. Uh, right, so let's talk about why to use a sleeping bag first. So here's one of our most popular bags. This is a, um, a wool bag. This is actually a warmer weight one. But why to use a sleeping bag? Well, the first thing is safety. With um, babies, most people are aware that loose bedding in a cot or a bassinet can be unsafe. It's one of the uh, risk factors for SIDS or SUDI is having loose bedding coming up over your baby's face. So when you use a sleeping bag, you don't need any other bedding apart from a bottom sheet um, underneath your baby, nothing loose that can come up and suffocate your baby. So a sleeping bag provides all the warmth you need just with the bag. Uh, and then the second factor is that by not having anything loose that can get kicked off or wriggled down under, um, your baby is much more likely to stay a consistent temperature all night. So this is obviously a major factor in the winter when blankets can all end up on the floor or down in one corner of the cot. Um, but the same applies in the summer because even, at, um, even in the middle of summer the temperature does drop quite a bit at 3 or 4 a.m. So it's um, useful to go to bed knowing that your baby's going to stay covered and at the right temperature all night. And then the third reason people choose to use a bag is sleep association. So when you put your baby in their sleeping bag and zip it up, they know it's bedtime. When they wake up in the middle of the night, they're still in their bag, they still know it's bedtime. And then if you're going somewhere for a holiday, this is really relevant obviously over the summer and over Christmas and so on, you can take your baby's um, normal sleeping bag take it to grandma's or you take it to a motel or you take it in the push chair and it says to your baby each time that it's sleep time because it's consistent and they know that the sleeping bag means it's sleep time and then when you combine a sleeping bag with um, a comforter that's your sort of portable sleep associations that's just a double reminder that it's time for sleep and something to snuggle on combined with the right temperature all night is a really good combination. All right. <clears throat> oh, we might just talk about fire labels too. So when you're choosing a sleeping bag, one of the factors to, to look at is the fire label. And as you may be aware, the fire labelling in New Zealand changed earlier this year. We now have two options in New Zealand. Caution, keep away from heat and flame, which is the same as you will see in most pyjamas and onesies. Um, and then we have warning, high fire danger, keep away from heat and flame. So basically the same text, but the red, um, the red label indicates that the fabric will burn quicker. It doesn't mean it will spontaneously combust. Your baby's not going to be lying in bed in a sleeping bag with a red fire label. It's not going to catch on fire in the bed. It means that if you were comparing these two fabrics, if you lip them with a match, <laughs> this would burn quicker, okay, compared to this. Anything, any sleeping bag um, that qualifies through comprehensive testing to have the white fire label means the fabric is much much slower to burn. So generally sleeping bags with the white label will contain merino wool which is naturally fire retardant or they will be a very thick dense cotton like the ones that um, the cotton that Burgo Pouch use the majority of their bags qualify for the white label. So just keep an eye on those um, on the website if that's a factor when you're choosing. We're now required by law to have the fire label on all sleepwear that's covered by the um, fire labelling standard. Um, all retailers should have that, whether you're in store or online. And also just be wary if you're buying um, products from overseas, if you're shopping around, uh, it's highly unlikely that any sleepwear you buy from from overseas will comply with the New Zealand safety standard. I've even seen some suppliers in Auckland selling products that don't even comply with the New Zealand standard in Auckland. So 
Um, we take that very seriously, so you'll see all the right information in all the products we sell and on our website. So the key thing when you're choosing a sleeping bag, um, in order for it to be safe, is you need to choose a bag that fits now. So the same way that you wouldn't buy a sh pair of shoes three sizes too big to fit your child later so you didn't have to, you know, buy more pairs of shoes, you don't, you know, buy a sleeping bag that fits now. Don't try and have your child grow into a size two to four year sleeping bag when they're only six months old because it would be miles too big, they'll get tangled up in it, it could end up over their face because the neck hole is too big. So your options with this, with sleeping bag sizing is generally a bag like our wool babes which are the most common size is 3 to 24 months so it's a it's got ways of making it smaller like these little snaps here it's got quite a small neck hole so this can fit a three month old baby here and it's got tons of length um, so when the when your baby's little you can just tuck that up underneath and this will all be a good fit round here and then as your baby gets bigger fabric's got enough stretch in it and you can undo those so that can grow to fit a two-year-old. But it's important that it's a snug, safe fit at three months old as well. So that's one that'll last you for a long time. Or you can go for the other option of choosing something little, which this is a three to nine month size. So this will, you know, there's just a lot less fabric. It looks small and cute when it's on your littler baby. Um, and it, you'll grow out of it quicker. So you can either go small and last for a shorter period of time, or one that is still a safe fit, but has a lot more length to it for later on. Either way, choose one that fits well now. Um, okay, and just while we're looking at the sizing too, we do have lots of sleeping bags in our range that are sleeping bag swaddle combos so if you're at the sort of three month size and you're thinking about shall I go for a sleeping bag now but my baby still likes to be swaddled we do have quite a few what we call transitional swaddles which means that you can still keep the arms in for now but the same garment can also be worn with the arms out so like this one the little swings zip off with this one you can have the arms in um, in with the snaps. This is an ergo cocoon, which we talked about in our swaddle um, live on Wednesday. Or you can wear it like a normal sleeping bag with the arms out. And then the halo, you can wrap it with the, with the arms in or wear it lower down like a sleeping bag. So that's a good, they're kind of good in-between options. They won't last you for um, long, mostly the transitional ones have a sort of three month um, age range. So you use them for that transitional period for three or four months and then you move on to a bigger bag. Okay, so let's look at the weights of sleeping bags. So the first one I showed you here was a duvet weight. So this is a duvet weight wool babe, which is suitable from sort of 20 degrees down to about 14 degrees. You can use it at this time of the year if you know at bedtime it's maybe 22 degrees but it's dropping down colder than that through the night you wouldn't most people wouldn't use a duvet weight um, through the middle of summer unless their house is consistently under 20 degrees um, and then you would probably still find it useful it's also worth knowing that this is our warmest bag if you're planning any camping at Christmas time um, my kids have always been taking camping from when they were about three months old so many many nights in the tent with them wearing duvet weight sleeping bag and four layers of merino and, and woolly socks and the whole lot um, so yeah duvet weight would be my wool bay would be my recommendation if you're camping over the summer but then during the day in a tent you totally need a summer weight bag because tent can be a bit like a sauna my tip for those of you who are planning to camp with your kids is during if, unless you have a canvas tent which is a lot cooler if you have a nylon tent, take your travel cot outside under a tree <laughs> during the day because that would be cooler than, um, than staying inside the tent. Okay, so our most um, popular wool bag for this, or most popular sleeping bag overall for this time of the year is a three seasons wool bag. 
So three seasons wool babe is made from two layers of fabric. So you can see there, two layers of fabric. It's a lovely soft stretchy fabric that's made specially for wool babe. It's 70% organic cotton and 30% merino. So it's soft and stretchy like a t-shirt but that 30% uh, merino that's knitted into the fabric means that it helps regulate temperature means if your baby does get a little hot and sweaty it stays a nice comfortable temperature it doesn't get all kind of cold and clammy and stinky like cotton does so if um if you're trying to have one bag that covers a wide temperature range then this is definitely your best bet Our kind of guidelines for room temperature is from about 18 degrees up to 28 degrees Personally, I used this before we had a summer wool babe in our range. I used this up to 33 degrees with my youngest um, and just had a fan on, had the window open and had just the nappy inside the bag. So on average, people would choose this bag for kind of rooms that are in the kind of low to, low to mid or high 20s. And it will do you um, for a much wider temperature range than any of our other mid-weight bags. Uh, so let's have a look what else. So I think comparison, this is our summer weight wool babe. Um, and you can just sort of see it's, it's a lot lighter because it's only one layer. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see how thin it is, but it's the same fabric but it's one layer rather than two. Nice and soft and stretchy. These can be easily used up to, um, I guess the early 30s. Sort of people buy a summer bag if their baby's room is from sort of 25 to 35 um, or if they're traveling somewhere hot for holiday obviously sleeping your baby in in a bedroom that's 30 degrees is not ideal at all um, recommended temperature for a baby's room is sort of 16 to 20 but you know to be realistic often um, houses in New Zealand don't have air conditioning. We're having this discussion this morning and some of our staff have air conditioning. Um, but a lot of people don't. A lot of you are relying on a fan. Um, you might, we're talking also about um, using a humidifier to maybe circulate a little of ex extra cool moisture in your baby's room. Um, so you just need to do whatever you can to get the temperature down. Let's see. <laughs> um, and choose as light a sleeping bag as you possibly can. So that's your summer weight wool babe. There's the three seasons wool babe in a side zip. So you can see in our wool babes we offer side zip or front zip down the middle. Neither one is better than the other, it's a personal preference. Uh, now just go through a bunch of our other popular brands. So you can just kind of see what the different bags are like. So this is a grow bag. Grow bags come in um, front or side zip. They can be woven cotton. This is a new sort of lightweight, almost like a muslin on the outside um, and a soft knit on the inside. So that's a one tog grow bag. They also make a 0.5 tog, which is um, lighter weight for the middle of summer. Then we have... Question. We've got some questions, yeah. Oh, let's have some questions. I'll come back to my large selection of sleeping bags. Warmer nights in a three-season bag with short sleeves. What if they get cold? Right, so <clears throat> it's like the six million dollar question that we get practically every day at the sleeve store, what to dress my baby in. Um, I think if the temperature is dropping in the middle of the night, you need to dress your baby for the cold part of the night because in the earlier evening when it's still warm you can leave the window open or you can have a fan on um, but you don't want to be getting back up in the middle of the night adding more clothes generally having cooler arms will not wake your kids up you know often kids um, sleep with their hands out and like the, the blankets or duvet you know up to their chest a lot of adults sleep that way too and that's not really going to wake you up make sure that your baby's um, or your child's core is the right temperature for the coldest part of the night so you could add um, like a merino bodysuit short sleeve merino bodysuit or even just a wool singlet um, inside your sleeping bag and then that even if the temperature drops if, 
inside is the right temperature, they should be fine. <coughs> but if you're worried about the short sleeves not being warm enough, you could go for something like a little Bonds onesie, which are quite lightweight, and combine that with like a one tog. That could be quite a garish combination. <laughs> I didn't style that one up in advance, obviously. Um, so like a light cotton long sleeve under a sort of mid-weight bag could, um, could work well for you. <coughs> All right. Next question, how often should a wool babe be washed? Um, I didn't used to wash mine very much at all. I just used to sniff them, and if they smelled bad or something had exploded on them, then I would wash them. A wool babe's like a wool jumper. Only wash it when it really needs it. Um, so the best thing to do with a wool babe is when you take, take your little one out of it during the day, just air it out. So rather than leave it scratched up at the bottom of the cot, just have it open and hang it over the side of your cot and then that'll get aired through the day. So I don't know, it's over to you. It depends how much you like doing washing. I really hate it. So um, I didn't used to wash them very much and they don't really need it. Just air them out, wash them if they get vomit or poo on them to be frank. And otherwise, you know, maybe once a month is probably about as frequent as you need. And just make sure that you use a liquid wool wash, like um, EcoStore is a good one. And the other question with that um, was why are the bags so long? They are long. <laughs> they're long because they're designed, like this size here is designed to fit from three months to genuinely 24 months. There's a lot of sleeping bags on the market that are advertised as like a zero to two years, but the average 18 month is already way too long for them. Our bags are genuinely designed to last um, until a two year old. So that means it's got to be from the shoulder to the foot and then still have a little bit of kicking room at the bottom. And when you buy a really a real premium bag like a wool babe, you do want to get money's worth out of it. So it's designed that it's the best quality that we can possibly make and to give you the best value over time. If you don't like the really long ones, we do make a wool babe in a itty bitty size as well, which I think we call it a zero to nine month. So it's littler on the top and it's quite a bit shorter. It'd probably still last you for a year or so. Sorry, were you filming that? That's all right. Whip it away. Okay. Is so it worth, should we, I was just wondering about the clothing guide, is it worth touching on the clothing guide in, in the wool babe pack? Good point. While we're talking about wool babes, James, who's behind the camera today. Hello. Hi, James. <laughs> <laughs> James um, came up with this beautiful little pack that you get in every wool babe. Um, it says, thank you for choosing wool babe. It's got your care instructions on the back. James's cute little pictures. Safe sleep tips. And also um, clothing guide. And this actually... Oh no, the clothing guide's on here, isn't it? Yep. Clothing guide comes on your thermometer. So most um, of our premium brands of sleeping bags come with a room thermometer. So no wonder I thought it was a little warm in here. It's 24 degrees according That's to the toasty. wool babe thermometer. <laughs> Um, and then on the back, you get a what to wear guide. It's a guide. We don't promise it's 100% accurate for every baby in every bedroom. It's a guide. <laughs> okay. The main thing about working out which clothing to use in your wool babe or any bag is just use your best judgment. You know, the baby's going to be fine if it's a little bit hot, a little bit cold. It's not going to make that much difference. We really just encourage you to use your common sense, use your judgment look at your baby if they're red and sweaty they're too hot if they're like blue they're too cold okay you just need to you know feel baby with the back of your hand on their ear or on their chest um, look at their color look if they're sweaty um, and just make some adjustments there's no like perfect definitive answer that'll tell you exactly what to wear because all babies are different like I know with my own kids my youngest, in the middle of winter, would be happy going to school in bare feet with shorts and a t-shirt. I literally have to make him put warm things on. Whereas my third child, he likes to go to bed with about six blankets and a woolly hat, you know, a onesie, and that would be in the middle of summer. So the kids are all different. Okay, just fire through any more questions you've got, and I'll just keep blabbing on until I've answered them all. With the ergo pouch you've got in front of you, there's a question about how warm is the ergo pouch compared to the three seasons? Okay, so this is a one-tog 
Virgo pouch. Um, one tog bags normally are recommended for a range of about 20 to 24, 25 degrees. So a wool bag, three seasons can be used from about 18 degrees. That little bit of merino in it does make it warmer, even though it's two layers of, this is two layers of cotton. Um, I just better check it's not bamboo or something. Yes, organic cotton. It's too many to remember. <laughs> um, so this is 100% cotton, the three season wool bag. Feels about the same weight, but this has 30% merino in it. So it'll just do you for a little bit lower temperature, and the merino is temperature regulating, whereas cotton is not. So if you're choosing between those two, and you can stretch to the extra dollars, I would go for the merino content. But then if you've got super sensitive skin, and even the softest super fine merino, if you find that irritates your baby's skin, then an ergo pouch. 100% cotton or bamboo bag is a really good option. These are all organic, they offer extremely good value for money in terms of the quality and the beautiful design and the beautiful fabrics. Ergo um, bags all have this cute little stretchy panel down the side as well, which helps to get a nice slim um, snug fit but also some wriggle room. So Ergo cocoons are they're, one of their key features is they have quite small arm holes and quite small neck holes. So if you have quite a chunky baby who's got quite a chubby neck, if I can be frank, ergo pouch bags might be a bit snug fit on you. So I always recommend that you try your baby's bags on before you wash them. We're always happy to take things back if the fit isn't right, but only if you haven't washed them first. So try them on, then wash them if they're a good fit. So that's your one tog. Um, this style of ergo pouch also comes in a 0.3 tog, uh, which is just the one layer of the sheeting fabric. And they also come in um, jersey fabric, so just a t-shirt just a rather than the woven. And these come in a one tog or a 0.3 or a 0.2 tog, I can't remember which. So basically a mid-weight and a summer weight in both the jersey or the woven. Right, we love Ergo Pouch, they're a really great brand. Right, what else have we got? Here's another cute one, this is an Eeny Meeny. A lot of you would know Eeny Meeny Miny Mo from their cute baby wear. They also make these gorgeous sleeping bags. So it's just a pretty simple, um, I think they're described as a 0.6 top. So it's two layers, but it's pretty light, like two, two layers of a really thin t-shirt fabric. And they come in a range of stripes this summer. And we have, this is a Nuslin bag um, made by Love to Dream. So Love to Dream, a lot of you will know from the Swaddle Up collection, one of our most popular swaddles. So they um, also make really great sleeping bags. These are, Nuslin is a fabric that they designed it's cool and open weave like a muslin, but it's stretchy. So you don't get the problem of the side seams tearing or um, fabric. Muslin's quite known for catching loose threads and getting pulls in it. You won't get that with the muslin, but you will still get the nice lightweight fabric. Um, so muslins come in a one tog, so sort of 20 to 25 degrees, and then they come in a point five tog, I think it is, or a point three tog, a summer weight. I obviously need to brush up on all my togs to remember the whole lot. We should probably say what a tog is. Oh, what's a tog? What's a tog? I'm grabbing on about togs and not mentioning what a tog is. Togs are what you wear to the pool. <laughs> <laughs> so, a tog is um, a measure of um, is it thermal resistance thermal, or yeah. thermal properties of fabric. It basically measures how warm a product is, how thick it is, how warm it is. So. A lot of our bags, um, mostly the cotton ones or the winter weight ones that have polyester in them, are tog rated. So the higher the number, the warmer the bag. So a 2.5 or 3.5 tog um, is a winter weight bag. These are like a one tog, so that's your kind of mid weight. And then down to ones like um, that are just one layer, they would normally be around a 0.3 or 0.5 tog. Um, so we kind of use a rough estimate of a one tog's equivalent to one blanket, one light blanket. Um, so a two and a half, three and a half tog 
that's you know three blankets over your baby um, 0.5 togs like the equivalent of a sheet um, bags that have merino in them are generally not tog rated because it, the temperature regulating properties of merino behaves quite differently to cotton or polyester so um, and they have a much wider range you can just vary the warmth with what clothing you put in does that help James? That helps, James yeah. knows. He just thought that I had forgotten to mention it. Okay, another bag that um, I'll just show you before we move on um, is Nature Baby. So Nature Baby make these really cute cocoons. And the Nature Baby cocoon comes in two options. You can have the merino lined bag or you can have with cotton on the outside or you can have two layers of cotton. You see the price is quite different because Nature Baby uses um, a beautiful organic merino on the inside. And they are a zero to two year size and they've got a whopping great zip that goes around the whole bag so um, if you're nappy changing you can put the whole thing open. And what else? Oh, I haven't showed you Slumber Sack. So Slumber Sack is um, a brand that is exclusive to the sleep store in New Zealand. Um, it's a UK brand and they are really super, super good value. They, I think on their website they start from about $25 or maybe $30. Um, and we have Slumber Sack in lots of colours, 0.5 tog or 1 tog or warmer ones for winter. So you can see they're just very simple. They don't have lots of... Um, extra bits and pieces. They're just a very nice quality fabric, simple design, giving you a really good budget option if um, you're looking for a second bag or if you just have a small budget. And that's everything. Thank you for watching.